Athletics and the Church of God. This is Pastor Rodney uh, digging in deep for Brother Kelly tonight. Kelly Freddie can't be with us. He is uh, getting ready for some things tomorrow, and he's busy tonight, can't be here. Uh, but we miss him tonight. So if you get a chance, to let him know that you missed him on the Dig Deep class. But he'll be back with us next week. Uh, so tonight, uh, Pastor Rodney's filling in. I've got my wife with me here. Uh, I'm going to put her on the spot in just a moment. <laughs> Uh, but tonight before we open, we're going we're gonna to pray because Kelly always does a good job of doing that. Pray for folks at home that are fighting this coronavirus. Um, we think things probably are, are, I hate to use words, pretty rough right now. But we have several friends that have contracted it and our heart goes out to them and their families. We want God to touch them. We also uh, have several family members uh, and friends that have lost loved ones this time of year. And this is a hard time for folks to be facing that. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer tonight and ask the Lord to be with us in this quick Bible study. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you. Praise you for this time to be in your house. Father, we pray for those at home tonight. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. Father, touch those individuals with coronavirus. Father, we're praying for miracles in families' lives tonight, Lord. You know the struggles. You know those who need you. We ask you to go out to the hospitals and to the houses and strengthen and build up and encourage those who are battling this horrible pandemic, Father. Help us to be safe. Help us to protect one another. Help us to follow guidelines and do all that we need to do, Lord, to look after those that we love. Father, this thing is real and it's hurting people, Father. May we put our brothers and sisters first and do what is right and love one another, Father, and cherish one another and pray for one another. Help those tonight. Now we'll be with us in this Bible study. We ask your hand to be upon us. Lead us in guidance from Christ's name. Amen. All right. Are you rapture ready? Uh, that is the thought for today. Miss Barbara, are you rapture ready? Uh -huh. Oh, yes, she is. That's right. Miss Barbara's a high D. We know what a high D is. That's one of those you can tell her in seven minutes and get it over with. And she's, she's ready, ready in seven seconds. That's right. Seven <laughs> seconds. Get it in, get it out. And, and she, she knows what you're talking about. She is rapture ready. Quick response. But we're looking at the rapture tonight. And um, I'm going to read a little bit of scripture here in just one moment. And I'm going to ask my lovely assistant, Mandy, um, just a few questions as we get going. Because uh, we believe here in Lexington that we are a uh, last days church. Uh, what does that mean? That means that we are a part of a church as, as a whole which is a larger conglomerate, not just the Lexington Church of God, but, but many churches which are out there all over uh, the city, all over the state, all over the nation, all over the world. Uh, a last day's church is a church that is ready, that is serving God, and is looking forward to his return. And, and that's what we believe a last day's church is, which is the true body of believers of Christ, uh, which are, our eyes are open to the truth, and we're watching for the return of God. And we believe in him to one day soon call and rapture us out here and take us home. And I'm going to pick on my wife a little bit tonight because uh, she grew up. Now, now first of all, we, we believe that uh, uh, not, not only the church of God is going to heaven. Uh, folks, other denominations, uh, there, there, there are folks uh, in, in many different, I don't want to say different religions, uh, but, but there are folks in families which are perhaps unchurched but yet have heard the name of Christ and believe on that name of Christ. And they may have never stepped foot in the church, but because they've heard the name of Christ and believe on the name of Christ and have given their life to him, they're going to be rapture ready to be called out of here. But, but Mandy grew up at uh, UCC, United Church of Christ. And uh, what, what did you believe on uh, believe about the rapture as you were growing up? Um, uh, we were once saved, always saved, basically. So um, I went through confirmation classes. Okay. I was going to get to that later. I was going to get yeah. to that later. She spoiled the question. No, that's me. I did it. Yeah, okay. She spoiled that. But, uh, so, so, yeah, so she's, y'all, you guys were pre-trib. And you also threw in that you were, went through confirmation class as a child. Right. Uh, that you were taught certain scriptures and you were sprinkled a or baptized in some type. And you were told you're ready. Now, now, 
First of all, I do want to say um, there, there's lots of arguments for the once saved, always saved. We are not a once saved, always saved church. That's, that's not in our beliefs within our church. Uh, however, I don't want to fault that whole doctrine as a whole. I don't want to start arguments with individuals. Um, I, I do believe as a Christian, I can get saved one time and I can stay saved forever as long as I give my heart to him and I don't jump out of his hands. I, I do believe that. So I don't want to even fault anybody with that, that argument. I don't want to fault the UCC. Um, but, but we can we can see in a backslide fall away from God. We do believe that. Uh, we believe that as church of God. But you said you were pre-tribulational rapture. So yes. what is a pre-trib rapture? What is that? It means that um, the tribulation, God's going to send tribulations. He's going to send um, certain things down that's not going to be fun to go through. It's going to be really, really bad for those who are left behind. Um, those who are saved will go to be with the Lord in heaven. Uh, but those who are not saved, who haven't given their heart to Jesus, will stay behind. That's a good answer. And there's, I set it up. There's two reasons why I asked this. Uh, one thing is, number one, UCC is a very, very mainstream uh, form of Protestant uh, Christianity. It's very, very mainstream. There's a lot of folks in there. So the rapture is not a church of God thing. Church of God does not have a handle on the rapture. It's, it's not something that we invented. It's not something we came up with as the church of God. It's not what our denomination uh, or our movement believes in. We didn't just create this. The rapture is very, very mainstream. Lots of churches believe in, in the rapture of the rapture of the saints. And so and, and the reason why they believe this is because this is deeply rooted in the, in the Bible of what we'll get to in just one moment. Uh, but another thing that I wanted her to point out was she was pointing out to the, 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 the pre-tribulation of saints, how tribulation is going to happen on earth. Uh, tribulation, when we look at it in the Bible, is better described as the time of Jacob's trouble. What's the time of Jacob's trouble? That means it's the time of Israel's trouble. Uh, Jacob being a, a offspring of Abraham, and it would be uh, uh, the ancestors of those who would not give their heart and their life to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's going to come a time of Jacob's trouble, which is in the end times after the rapture of the church, and that's when wrath of God is going to be poured out on the earth. Now, and, and that's important to us because I'm, I'm going to get to this in just a moment. But as Christians, um, we do not receive the wrath of God. We, we just don't. And I do want to point that out real, real quick as, as Christian. Uh, you do not receive the wrath of God. Now, we receive uh, condemnation from God. Consequences. Oh, yeah. Consequences. Yeah. yeah, you think you get in trouble with your wife. <laughs> I've been in trouble with her several times. You can really get in trouble with God if we get a rebuke from Him. Because uh, if we're in God's will, he's trying to keep us in his will. And uh, what, it, what is it? Uh, God is one daddy you don't want to get a spanking from. You know, because he'll, he'll, he'll really spank you pretty hard. Uh, so you don't want that. However, uh, as Christians, we're not subject to the wrath of God. What is the wrath of God? What's the difference between the wrath of God and consequences of God? Let me stop there. Consequences is basically what you got yourself into. You have done something wrong, and you have to face the consequences for that, whether it's, um, you know, addictions or if you've done something, like, I don't know, if you don't clean your room, your kid's going to get a spanking. Like, that's a consequence. Uh, Dr. Or Spock you, says you can't spank him. You well, have to I'm not a Dr. Spock. <laughs> anyway, um, so your child's going to get some sort of consequence for not doing what their parents tell them to do. And it's the same thing with God. You, he's not going to purposely... He doesn't want to be angry at you. He doesn't want to, to have to discipline you. But if you do something wrong, you're not going to know that you've done something wrong unless you get some sort of consequence for those actions. So wrath is more, wrath is going to be like seriously angry. Anger and fury. Yeah. So let me ask you, as a parent, you would pour out consequences on your children because you love them. Right. Would you ever pour out wrath on your children? No. Because wrath is violent rage. And it's just...
justice being served. It's, 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 it's basically anger, it's justice, it's punishment, it's very, very violent, it's taking your life. It's, it's something that is a last resort. You know, in wars, oftentimes, we take out wrath on the enemy because we have to go in and fight a war to, we say, win back freedom or to take over a certain land. And there is a wrath that comes from that. And that's the same thing that God is going to do in the end times. But I do, I do want to, uh, if you want to open your Bibles and look with me at, um, I want to start in Revelations chapter 4 tonight. I'm not going to read this because I did this the other night on Wednesday in my study. But uh, I do just want to remind everyone, there, there is going to be a rapture. If you're watching this video for the first time and, and thinking of that concept, or maybe if you're at home and, and you're, you're seeing this rapture being talked about, you're talking about it with your friends, and your friends have said, there's not a rapture in the Bible, and you can't show me a rapture in the Bible. Hey, sharpen your pencils. We're going to give you some ammo tonight. Write down these texts. Write down these notes, and you can go back. Please don't beat your friend up with them. Don't do that. We don't ever recommend doing that. But share with your friends, hey, this is where it's at in the Bible. Ask them to go back and read it for themselves. And if they'll read it and pray about it and have an open mind toward it, I, we believe they'll see it as well. So in your Bibles, Revelations chapter 4. Um, chapter 4, verse 1, guess what? That's the rapture. Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, that is the actual rapture. How do we know that? If you read the book of Revelation, and a lot of folks say, Pastor, I don't like the book of Revelation. It's confusing. It is confusing, um, but the more we study it, and the more we pray and the more in our spirit through reading that time and time and time again and also through getting closer to God. So don't be surprised if someone who is unchurched reads the book of Revelations and all they see is anger and meanness and hurt and it turns them off. It's because they've not had enough time with God yet. New Christian, if Revelation scares you, don't get upset. You just haven't had enough time with God yet. It's coming. God will open it up for you. And you'll get feeling better about it. Are you reading Revelation? The yeah. whole book. No. Isn't that Revelation 4 1? I am going to read, yes. Okay. But where I'm coming from is um, chapters 1, 2, and 3. That's talking about the seven ages of the church. That was both um, historic for back in time. It's also for the spiritual ages of how the church is and our mindset and how we act and react. But it's also for the future coming churches and, and how we're going to be as well. So... Either which way you look at it, chapters 1, 2, and 3, that's your church age. That's the, that's the church age of the book of Revelation, which is where we're at right now. We're in the church age. Chapter number 4, the verse says this. It starts out, After this I looked, and there in heaven was an open door, and the first and the first voice that I heard speaking to me, uh, like a trumpet, said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. Someone in your Bibles underlined the first part of that verse in uh, Revelation 4, verse 1. After this, I looked. Well, after this, what? After the church age. Revelation 4, verse 1 is talking about after this. It starts out, after this, I looked. What is he talking about? After what? After the church age. And then it also closes, uh, then I will show you what must take place after this. He's talking about, I'm going to show you what has to take place after this. Well, after what? He's talking about the church age. So, uh, Revelations chapter 4, verse 1, tells us something's going to take place after something. That something is the church but the church age. And so, right here in Revelations chapter 4, verse 1, there's your rapture. Now, the church is not mentioned again in Revelations. The church or the bride, which the, the church is known as the bride of Christ, we're not mentioned again until Revelations chapter 19. So, all the stuff that happens between Revelations chapter 4... And Revelations chapter 19 does not deal with the church, okay? If you're church and you're rapture ready, verses uh, chapters 4 through 19, don't be afraid because that's not you. Uh, that's, that's for folks who are left behind, who didn't go to the rapture, who were not saved. They, they weren't rapture ready, so they weren't caught out. Um, now, um, also, um, I don't have time for this tonight, don't read that and get upset because there's going to be millions upon millions upon millions of people who are saved through these tribulations and they're going to die and they're going to go to heaven and they're going to make it to heaven because they refuse to take the mark. So when you read that, also know that, that, that there's going to be people who are saved after the rapture and they're not going to face consequences. So 
I don't want to get hung up on that, but verse chapter 4 is your rapture. The church is not mentioned again until uh, uh, chapter 19, so all that stuff in between, church, you don't have to worry about. So, what is the rapture and where does the rapture come from? We'll turn over to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. All right, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm uh, going to read uh, verses 13 through something and stop. Now, this is where Paul uh, was talking to the church at Thessalonica, and they were just as afraid because they felt like they were in the, in the end times, just like we feel like we're in the end times today. Does that make us wrong? Uh, no. Did it make them wrong? No. We're, we're all living in the last days. The Bible tells us that once Christ is risen and is at the right hand of the Father, that's when the last days begin. Um, it just so happens it's been 2,000 years since Christ died. Two days. Uh, thousand, uh, in the eyes of the Lord, a thousand years equals a day, and a day is a thousand years. So kind of biblically, it's been two days since Christ died. Third day is going to come back, so it can come back any day now. But Revelation tells us that in Chapter 4, verse 13, these same Christians had questions for Paul concerning the resurrection. And here's what Paul had to say to them. Now, this is going to be out of the, the Holman Bible, which is the cried and rose again in the same way God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep or those who have died through Jesus. For we say this to you by the revelation of the Lord. We who are still alive at the Lord's coming will certainly have no advantage over those who have fallen asleep or who have died. He says, for the Lord himself, here again, here's the rapture. This is what's going to happen in Revelation chapter 4. Um, this first, first Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16, is going to tie in with Revelation chapter 4. And he says, for the Lord himself will descend out of heaven with a shout, with the archangel's voice and the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first, which will rise up out of the ground. Then we who are still alive will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. There again is your rapture. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. Also tie that in with Revelations chapter 4. There, uh, folks, is the rapture of your church. So for folks who say the Bible doesn't mention a rapture and it's not going to happen and we're all going to go through tribulations, there is some of your documented proof of a rapture of the saints who are going to be called home. But it doesn't end there. We can, we can go on. The Bible continues to talk about it in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. The Word tells us this. About these times and the seasons... Brothers and sisters, we do not need anything to be written to you. In other words, Paul said, we don't need to write of you about these times and seasons of when they're going to take place. Because Paul says, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. In other words, it's going to slip up on us the day of the Lord when he calls us home. When they say peace and security, then sudden destruction comes on them like labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, you are not in the dark that this day would overtake you as a thief. He says, for you are sons and daughters of the light, and you are sons and daughters of the day. You're not of the light, the, you're not of the night, and you're not of the darkness. So we must not sleep like the rest of the world. What's Paul talking about here in this river in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5? Is he's talking about the day of the Lord when the Lord calls us home. He's saying that on they, who's that? The world. The world is going to be crying out for peace and safety. And they're going to say, hey, safety and security. And right when the world, which is those who are not looking for God, are saying peace and safety, that's when the day's going to come as a thief in the night and God's going to rapture us out of here and they're not going to, be, they're not even going to know about it. They're going to be caught off guard. So you see, we have the promise that he's coming in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. We have the word in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 telling us, hey, we don't know when this is going to happen, but keep our eyes open. Don't fall asleep. But the Bible warns us he's going to happen like a thief in the night. You know, if you think about it, this thing's gone on for some 2,000 years now. There's a lot of folks falling asleep. Um, do you ever see people that you love kind of fall away from God and wonder why? Yes. Yes. It's, it's, um, it's a scary thing, folks. We... 
Uh, now it's not the time to give up on God. Uh, we're in the very last of the end times. And, and if you look at the hate in the world today, and if you look at the political system, and you look at the way the whole world is charged to hate one another, um, that's one of the signs of the times how uh, uh, First Timothy tells us that in the last days men will be prideful, they'll be boasters, they'll be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God, and they'll be truce breakers, they'll be backbiters. That's the time that we're living in today. That's, that really is the last days that we're living in. But I've got more ammo for you. Well, well folks, say, well, well, the Bible tells us in, in Matthew that, that no one knows the day and no one knows the hour. That, that is very true. If we look at Matthew chapter 25, verses 36 through 39, the Word tells us that no one, yeah, chapter 24, that no one knows the day uh, nor the hour. Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 39, tells us this. Now, uh, this was Christ talking with his disciples. He says, Now concerning the day, uh, concerning, concerning that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, except the Father only. But he goes on to say this, As the days of Noah were, so the coming of man will be. For in those days, before the flood, there was eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah bore the ark. They did not know until the floodwaters came and swept them away. So this is the way the coming of the Son of Man will be. There again, Christ is talking about the coming rapture. And he's telling us that, that no one knows the day and no one knows the hour. He says, not even the angels in heaven nor himself, but only God the Father. But he does give us a warning here to, uh, to be what to look for. And he's, he gives, talks about the days of, of Noah, how in the days of Noah, no one knew of the coming of the flood. But when we think about the coming of the flood, maybe who, who knew the flood was coming? Well, Noah tried to tell everybody. Noah tried to tell everybody. He tried to tell everybody, but they wouldn't listen. So Noah, who built an ark, he knew the flood was coming. Right. He knew the flood was coming because he did what? He built an ark. He talked to God. He talked to God and he built an ark. So obviously when Noah finished the ark, he knew that the flood was coming. So there was someone who knew the flood was coming. That someone was Noah. Hey, church, we know that there is a flood coming upon the earth. The flood is the rapture where the Lord calls us out of here to be, to be with him in the air. We're looking for that day and we're waiting for that day. And because we are Christians, we can see the signs all around us that that time is coming just by the things that are happening in the earth. Um, we know that through faith, through God opening our eyes, through discernment, through, through knowing what God is, is speaking to us through his word, through studying his word. So, so even though we can't put an exact time on it, even though we can't put an exact date on it, we do know that he's coming back because the scripture tells us just as Noah knew a flood was coming, Christians are going to know that the rapture is coming as well. And, and if, if you look now, more and more Christians are getting fired up and more excited about this thing that's coming called the rapture. And how do we, how's one more proof of documented proof of the rapture coming for, for Christians? Turn back to 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and I'm going to wind this thing down. Now, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, this uh, again sums up the rapture. And Mandy did this, was talking about wrath uh, to come in the uh, tribulations. Uh, first, first Thessalonians chapter 5 deals with the wrath that's coming. Now, now for, for folks that are questioning, is there really going to be a rapture? And if these scripture texts have not proven to you yet that there's going to be a rapture, look what the Bible says in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 through 11. Now, this is what God says about Christians. And someone needs to know this today. And know this about yourself, not just the church, but about you yourself. And here's a promise from God. For God did not appoint us, who are us, Christians, the church. Not all mankind. Now that's not all mankind. It's us, believers in the body of Christ, and just the church. For God did not appoint us to what? To wrath. But to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so whether we are awake or whether we sleep, that means whether we fall asleep in our bed or whether we're walking in the middle of the night or what have you, or whether we're dead in the grave or what have you, or whether we're in the ground or, uh, or what have you, whether uh, we can be asleep in our bed or asleep in the ground or asleep 
dead in our grave, God's going to wake us up. For we will live together with him. And Paul goes on to say, therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as you are already doing. So Paul reminds us that, hey, Christians, children of God, you are not saved to be uh, set aside for wrath. You are saved to escape wrath. Now, God's wrath is going to be poured out on the earth, and it's going to be poured out through the great tribulations, but it's going to be poured out through tribulations after the Antichrist has done all his uh, evil deeds on earth. But then after that, then God's wrath is coming. And a matter of fact, uh, through reading Revelations, I believe that God's wrath is going to be held up, and God's not going to pour out his wrath on the earth until the very last tribulational saint who missed the rapture because they were an unbeliever at the time, until that very last tribulational saint is saved and dies and goes to heaven, that's when God's going to pour out his wrath on earth. Because then all the saints who have been raptured will be gone, and all the folks who will be saved after the rapture will be saved and taken to heaven. Then God's going to pour out his wrath on earth. Hey, God does not pour out wrath on people whom he loves. I, I've seen people do that all the time. I say that all the time. Uh, folks will say, God doesn't love me, and he's pouring out wrath on me because I've been a bad person. God doesn't do that. God, God doesn't do that. Um, God's wrath is going to come in the end times after the tribulations, after the rapture of the church, after all the saints who, who had to die through tribulations. That's when his wrath is coming. And when his wrath falls on those who are left behind, I don't want to sound bad and talk mean of people, but for the folks who don't go in the rapture and also for the folks who don't uh, die through tribulations, the folks who receive the mark and worship the devil, worship the beast, um, these aren't going to be just any type of folks. They're not going to be folks, this is going to sound bad, like us. These are going to be really, 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 really bad folks. And they're going to be, they're going to be murderers. They're going to be acceptors of the devil. They're going, to, they're going to willingly follow the Antichrist. They're going to willingly say they hate God. They don't want nothing to do with God. And they're going to follow everything that the devil stands for. And so um, not only that, but folks who are worried about can I accidentally take the mark of the beast? Can it be in this vaccine? Can I be accidentally taking the mark or getting my mom died because I suggest my mom to take this vaccine? God's not a God that he's going to slip up and sneak a vaccine to us and cause us to take the mark by mistake. Folks who take that mark in their hand or in their forehead, they're going to know, that's right, they're, they're going to know the purpose of that mark. They're going to know they're turning their back on God. He's not going to slip up and, and kill nobody. God's not a God to do stuff like that. He loves me. So, there is a rapture. We hope this has answered some questions. And I was going to give a few moments here, and I will still do it on the air, uh, for our individuals in church tonight. If they have any questions, or they're, they're, they're welcome to answer, and I'll let Mandy do all the answer, and I'll keep my mouth shut. Uh, but if there's anyone in church tonight who showed up to this Bible study, if you have a question, we'd like to answer that. Hershey's Kisses again. Is this one? Yes. He eats chocolate and then gets sick and then bad things happen. But that's her little buddy. So all dogs go to heaven except Fanny. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get in trouble. I, hey, we're talking about wrath and consequences. Uh -oh. I'm getting ready to pay consequences. And if I don't stop, I'm going to get wrath. <laughs> and we don't want to do that. He'll be in the doghouse. We'll He'll be in the doghouse with the dog. That's right. We will. Hey, Church, we hope this sums up uh, some of the questions folks have about the rapture. Uh, why are we doing this lesson tonight? Um, we're doing this because we believe the time's close. We really do. Um, folks say, well, do you think it's close because of the election? No, I don't believe it's close because of the election. Um, I do believe there's civil unrest and there's lots of anger in the election because of sin. So many folks have fallen away from God. And now sin creeps in and folks are getting mad with one another. Hate builds up and hate has to come out in, in the form of something. And so it's coming out through all the politics and the, uh, hey, praise the Lord, the riots have calmed down. Uh, but 
now we're, we're praying for folks. Now we've got car bombs going off in Nashville. Oh, my goodness. All of the hate in the world today, it doesn't have to be this way. Uh, God has provided the answer. If the church world, if the world in general would just turn to him, we could live a, a so much better life. You know, honestly, um, I'm ready to go in the rapture. I can't wait. But man, if we would have a good revival and lots of folks get saved and we could have some, some real legitimate gospel type peace on earth and folks love one another, man, that could be some good time living these last days. That could be wonderful. I enjoy life. I enjoy living here. I really do. Uh, for some reason, she enjoys living with me and, and I, I love living with her. But uh, if the rapture happens, we can't wait to go in that too. But hey, uh, God bless you. This is Pastor Rodney in Lexington. Sign out. Should I do that or would you like to do that? You'll do that for us. Okay. Hey, this is Pastor Rodney Lexington. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Uh, our prayers are for you and your family. Thank you so much.